Johnny Valencia joining us, getting ready for Monterey Car Week. As we talk to him every year, you know, he's really big with the uh, exotics uh, on Broadway. He's one of the main organizers. So what do we have planned this year, man? Well, first off, it's good to talk to you. I think every year we say, man, we should do this more than once a year. And then, you know, I'm going to say it's on me that we don't. <laughs> it's uh, always a pleasure. It's even better when we get to run into each other uh, at any event anywhere in the world. But um, yeah, man, everything's uh, great. Uh, definitely looking forward to next week. And yeah, I'll, I'll push on you a little bit harder uh, after this so we can uh, do more. You know, um, I really wanted to go. I got uh, my accountant said I can't go this year, uh, but so I guess we're going to have to wait unless I just randomly run into you at some point between now and then. But what do you guys have planned this year? It's always the biggest for those people who are just, I don't know, waking up or um, hatching from the rock that they were hidden behind. <laughs> uh, your show is the biggest public show of displaying the most exotic cars and things that most people are have. Most things are behind a paywall for. So tell us a little bit about that like you do every year. And then what do we have going on this year? Yeah, for sure, for sure. And yeah, that, that would have to be an extremely large and heavy rock if uh, this is the first time. But, you know, it's always room to learn and, and, and to experience. So this year, Exotics on Broadway um, is once again, uh, you know, during Monterey Car Week in Seaside, California. Uh, the date is Saturday, August 17th. So that is next Saturday um, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's on Broadway Avenue in seaside california and we also use uh like six or seven blocks of free bonds avenue which is a cross street uh completely shut down uh as you mentioned open to the public free for spectators which is huge for for car week you know, there's very little opportunity for the general public to go and experience you know pretty much what is a takeover of the peninsula for a week and a half uh of, you know, just amazing vehicles and amazing people and, uh, you know, builders and manufacturers and the, you know, all the big shops and the big names, uh, as well. So, um, going to be big again this year. Uh, th we have a title sponsor, which is mod find mod find is the, uh, online automotive marketplace and ad for you to, you know, sell and buy parts. So we're happy to have them back. They were a title sponsor a couple of years ago as well. Uh, so they're back to be a title. Um, and this year also we have a featured mark, uh, last year it was Pagotti. This year it's, yeah. And then this year it's Koenigsegg. Uh, oh. it, it works out really well because it's their 30th anniversary. So they'll be celebrating throughout car week at, at different events. Um, however, for our event, um, something that people would like to hear, if you would like to check it out, we're probably going to have somewhere between 24 and 29 Koenigseggs there. Wow. And there's, now there's people who have never seen one. There's millions yeah. of people who have never seen one. Even if you're in a, a very big car state, you know, not probably not so much California because that's where they get all the cool cars. But I'd say unless you're outside of California, Texas, uh, maybe Chicago and Florida, so some of them I name states, some of them I name cities, maybe somewhere in New York City, you're typically not going to see stuff like this. And if you see it, it's super rare. Yep. Yep. Uh, I'll give a shout out to uh, Connecticut, and uh, Columbus, Ohio area, who has a, a very heavy exotic car, hypercar uh, population as well. But yeah, you're right. I mean, this is going to be very unique. Uh, you know, we'll have to dig into the, you know, unofficial record books to see if this might be the largest gathering, whether it's in the world or the U.S., um, but if anybody out there has a Koenig so, and because it would be great to have 30 for the 30th anniversary right now, we're like 24 to 29. Um, but, uh, Christian Koenig said himself will be there. Uh, they'll be, you know, so they'll have a booth selling, you know, merchandise, signing autographs. He'll be up on the stage, um, you know, talking a little bit about the brand and what everything means with the 30th year. Um. So that that that's going to be a big piece for us, and we're excited to be able to showcase that for everyone there. Um, we also have uh, Pagani again. Pagani is going to be there. Horatio Pagani will mm -hmm. also be there as well. 
uh, you know, doing similar things that Christian will be doing. Um, they probably have 12 to 15 Pagonis, which again, <laughs> same deal, same deal. You know, yep. how often do you want, how often do you see 12 to 15? Um, other hypercar, uh, manufacturers, you've got Sissinger there, uh, Rimac, um, uh, oil stain lab is bringing their car fresh from the, uh, Goodwill Festival speed hill climb, uh, not long ago. Wow. Um, yep. I'll be sharing that with us. Uh, SSC North America. Uh, who else do we have? The um, Daily Driven Exotics and Gumball 3000 will have, you know, some folks there and some cars, uh, which is always a fan favorite. Right. And in total, uh, I believe officially registered, we're at 60 hyper cars. Wow. Uh, which, uh, again, in itself, and, and, and I'm talking to things, you know, Bugatti Super Spores, Bugatti Pure Spores. Um, really cool. There's going to be two McLaren P1 HDKs. Wow. Uh, for those that don't know, the HDK is the custom P1s that's built by Lanzante in the UK uh, with the Cosworth engine and, and all that. Your 918s, your Senna's, your Senna GTR's. Um, Lotus is bringing the new Avisia, the, the new hypercar. Uh, that'll be there. So list goes on and on. It's going to be a, a, a great time. We're expecting once again, you know, anywhere between 40 to 50,000 people. Um, and then on top of that, have a lot of supercars and exotic cars registered. Um, and you know, we can't leave out the favorite brands and companies that, you know, help make our cars what they are. You know, if, if you personalize and customize your cars, even if it's just, you know, if it's a set of wheels, uh, better tires or, you know, more aero and body kits. Um, you know, we've got Gintani there, uh, who else, you know, Meguiar's Bowden Auto House uh, is going to be there, Vorsteiner, Liquid Molly. Um, you can check all the official vendors on our website as well. And that's, is is that EOB.com or is it spelled out Exotics on Broadway? It's spelled out Exotics on Broadway.com. Uh, and you can also see the daily updates on our Instagram channel which is also at exotics on Broadway, um, to check everything out. We're, we're probably at the point where we're going to be posting about two, three times a day, uh, up to, uh, showtime. Let me ask you something. We're going back a little bit, cause that sounds like a fantastic event. And I had a few questions that popped out. So this question I can save cause it's such a crazy question. Uh, but going back to this being an, an open event for the public, there's parking. They may have to park out, but I remember, are there still buses basically picking people up? Yeah, good question. Thanks for bringing it up. Uh, there is free parking and free shuttle transfers. Um, we will be posting about that actually later today and often until show t- uh, showtime. Um, it's General Jim Moore Boulevard and Eucalyptus. Uh, we'll be posting maps, times, uh, I believe the shuttles will run from 12 p.m. to 7 p.m. We have more than we have several shuttles that are just looping all day long uh, that will drop people off uh, right at the event. Yeah, and um, I mean that's awesome, you know. So because people are going to have those questions, and for an event that draws so many people in such a tight space, it's important to know ahead of time where you're going and where you need to be, or else you're going to be parking was- in no man's land. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I mean, you, you don't have to park uh, there. We do recommend to park there because of the dedicated shuttle. Um, it is tough to find parking in a public area, uh, you know, like city streets and all mm-hmm. of that. Um, so we do highly recommend people uh, utilize and, and, and use that that um, free parking and free shuttle. Uh, and then the other question that you might be bringing up is things like food. So there are so many you know, existing food restaurants that uh, prepare for this event already on Broadway. Um, so we'll also be sharing uh, a map with the locations of all the food and drink folks uh, so people can take advantage of that. Yeah. So the other question I had, and that's also good. So you can, I mean, I, I personally would encourage making sure you don't show up hungry because when you have that kind con- of concentration of people, you might be waiting for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. but getting a pop or something, or actually I would suggest arriving early. If you want to eat and be a part of it, get there at 11, get a great parking spot. You're probably within walking distance of the event and go somewhere and get some food to eat so that when it ramps up and you see just droves of people walking by the window, it's time to get up and go. But the, the side question that I had is 
Why do you think for there's be such a big, uh, big concentration of these cars in Columbus? Why Columbus? Any idea? Have you ever wondered that? Like why, why Columbus? I have, but you know, it, it's a college town. It's a very, those aren't college cars. No, 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 no. It's not that, you know, college towns to me, you know, do a good job of investing in the city. And I think that along with other major businesses and companies that have chosen Columbus as their home, it just contributes mm. to the growth and the amount of money that is there. So, I, I mean, if you have it, uh, go and do a search or Google, you know, companies that are headquartered in the Columbus, Ohio area, and you're going to be, it's like, wow, what? same Probably thing. It's like, yeah, it's like, why'd you choose this? Um, so then you can just continue to do your digging and homework on, you know, uh, you know, state incentives and blah, 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 blah. So, and, you know, you'll, uh, I'm sure you'll yeah. your answer. Big corp incentives. Because my yeah. memory of, of Columbus was it was a little cool and it was rainy. Obviously, it was toward the end of October, if I recall correctly. I was talking 2014. And we went out there because of uh, Honda, the Honda factories out in Mainville and the test yeah. track and all that kind of stuff and the NSX PMC. So, yeah, it makes a lot of sense, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it's great. It's great to see that they have these huge events out there. Um, and uh, the supercar community, you know, emerges, which over time turns into a hypercar community. Um, yeah, so it's good to see the the car community, you know, being strong all over. All right. So you guys have heard it here and you're going to hear it again. But uh, Exotics on Broadway dot com, Exotics on Broadway and Instagram. Um, we were recording this on August 7th. So by the time this comes out, all the information that Johnny was talking about will be available on all those media outlets. I strongly encourage you if you're going to Monterey uh, to make sure you stop by this event. And again, it's it's huge. Um, it's exciting. People are just crazy in a good way. And you're going to see the largest collection of, of hypercars and even supercars that you're probably ever going to see in your entire life. So check it out. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. And, you know, I never want to forget to leave out the the great city of Seaside, uh, their support and uh, partnering with us to continue to bring this event to Car Week in a, in a very fun, cool uh, location. They support us tremendously through City Works, fire, police, uh, everything. You know, we have full support of the great city and working with them has been uh, nothing but a pleasure. Can I ask you about this? Are you concerned at all? Because it seems like every year that area seems to get upset about Monterey Car Week when it brings a lot. Sure, it brings a crap ton of traffic to the area, but it, I would imagine it brings a lot of income and a lot of cool stuff to the area too. But do you think it's ever in danger of just not existing? Because I remember Exotics on Broadway wasn't always on Broadway. Yeah, and, uh, you know, the, <laughs> the, the, the politics of Car Week – uh, is always uh, fun to to explore. Uh, yeah, you know the event originated in Cannery Row area mm -hmm. uh, of Monterey, and it was exotics on Cannery Row. And what ended up happening there is, you know, the event just got too big, along with the city um, expanding Cannery Row. Uh, you know, like open par open parking lots that we used to activate and turned into multi level parking garages, which doesn't really benefit us. Um, so we were losing real estate and, um, we actively chose to start exploring new locations. Um, and you know, we were looking all over the peninsula for something. Um, and Seaside actually approached, uh, us. That's uh, awesome. At, at, yeah. As, as an opportunity, you know, they, they were going through a, a growth and revitalizing their downtown. So it worked out really well. Um, and if you go down Broadway, uh, and Seaside is beautiful. You got great businesses, small business. Um, it's been fun to, for us to grow and, and watch them grow with us uh, with the revitalization of, of the Broadway Avenue area. But I get it. You know, Monterey Car Weeks basically in, in the past, the history was more classic. You know, your Concours, um, you know, button up shirt and bow tie type of thing. And, and then here come exotic car owners and younger demographic that that enjoy to drive their cars, which is one, you know, they love to drive them. Um, number two, they, they love to 
be together. Um, and then number three, it, it does bring on a new generation of the automobile enthusiasts, starting from kids to, to those that want to aspire to, you know, maybe see, drive, own a Ferrari or a McLaren or a Lamborghini. Um, so that is what we enjoy seeing. And, you know, we do, I feel a great job of managing and, and controlling this event so that we can continue doing it. Um, again, it's not normal, which is why maybe people, maybe people don't like it, right? You know, uh, classical music at a Concorde versus a revving Lamborghini with a Bowden Auto House exhaust. Right. Sure. Yeah. So, so, um, and again, yeah, there's riffraff stuff that goes on during car week around that might involve an exotic car, but I mean, that's not our event. Like, uh, like a Bitcoin millionaire with a hypercar (laughs) or something. Yeah. You know, I'm not naming anyone specific because I don't know who's, who, who has the money and who doesn't, but yeah, yeah, but you can't really control that. And that doesn't happen at your event. So. Yeah, I mean, if something happens in Carmel and it happens to be in a hypercar, like all of a sudden our event is tied to it. I don't know right. why. Yeah, you know, same thing. Hey, if someone if, if someone rolls a, a a Lambo into a sand pit at a Concor, you know, we don't automatically say, "Hey, Pebble Beach Concor, you're 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 done." Right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it, it's tough, and you know, we 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 do get a li- honestly, it's been it's been less and less, and I good. I really enjoy- good it um so again we we got a great management team we got a great logistics team it takes about 75 people wow to put this event on every year that's wild but when you when you see it you you understand you know it just there's just too many things that could not necessarily go wrong but too many things that need to be prepared for because again we're dealing with 50 60 thousand people in the concentration of, you know, a handful of hours and, you know, a lot of cars, a lot of people, a lot of things to worry about, a lot of safety and stuff like that. So, you know, yeah, I wish I, I go ahead. I was just going to, I'll, I'll tell you one thing that is, uh, I guess underappreciated or even unknown is the events on Saturday. It's basically almost the end of car week outside of Pebble. Um, and a lot of these owners, a lot of these companies, a lot of these brands, you know, you don't, you typically don't come to car week as a brand and do one thing, you know, you take advantage of being out there and and investing your employees and and whatnot. So a lot of these folks have, are at the other events early in the week. And, you know, by the time you get to Saturday in our event, it's kind of their time to let loose, unbutton a couple buttons, maybe wear a t-shirt and jeans or shorts instead of, uh, you know, dressing up. Right. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, handshaking and and business selling this is their time to have fun and it's almost like i mean these guys are like rock stars all right i mean and i'm not i'm no, not you're saying right. yeah like christian Conan's like i'm saying the 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 guy who registered the person that registered you know their their, their gallardo to be in our show they get to roll through and 40 and fifty thousand people have their phones out and they just you know, it's it's a show. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's like they're rock stars, right? So, um, I mean, that, that's one of the things that people tell us. So that's why you see Horatio and and Christian and um, I mean, Ford Performance is is going to be in our event again. They're they're a repeat customer. Uh, they love rolling through that and you know being the rock star and getting able to let loose for one day. Well, I wish I could be there. I'm not going to be able to, but thanks again for joining um, the show as we do every year. And we're going to let everybody else go. And we're going to catch up a little bit. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, appreciate it. Um, come on out to uh, Exotics on Broadway next Saturday, the 17th year in Car Week. You're going to see a lot of really awesome things. And uh, thanks again for the time, man. Of course. <laughs> All right, we want to thank Johnny Valencia for joining the show as always, but we're going to switch from multi-million dollar hypercars to some very inexpensive cars. I just pulled up this list, and these are the top 10 vehicles you can buy for under $15,000 in no particular order. We have the Toyota Prius, 2012 Toyota Prius, the 2015 Buick Verano. I don't even know what that is. I'm going to have to look it up really quick. The 2018 Chevrolet Cruze. 
I've driven one of those. They're not bad. A 2018 Kia Forte. I'm literally surrounded by Kia Fortes and Teslas everywhere I go here in Phoenix. We have the 2018 Hyundai Ionic. That's a cool car. 2016 Toyota Camry. 2017 Mazda 3. It says the Mazda Mazda 3. So that's kind of funny. It's just the Mazda 3. 2017 Ford Fusion. 2016 Subaru Forester. And an Acura is on this list. A 2016 Acura ILX. Which one of these vehicles would you buy for under $15,000 if you needed another car? I would take a look at, I don't know if that 2018 Hyundai is an Ionic 5 or just an Ionic. It would say Ionic 5 though, wouldn't it? If it's an Ionic 5, I might take a look at it. Otherwise, probably going with the ILX or the Camry. What would you get? Hard Parking Podcast, a little bit of cars, so much more available anywhere you get your podcast or check it out at hardparkingpod.com.